Good day, dear colleagues. Uh, so it's time for a short talk, for really short talk of chaotic time series. And uh, first of all, first of all, I would like to tell some words about the application of chaotic series. I would like to persuade you that it's not some mathematical, artificial object um, coined by mathematician in order to taught you a mastership program and PhD students, but it's real life. Um, real life object and what is most important, it is have lots of important applications. So the first application is uh, um, beaten. It's really chaotic time series and so a chaos not only around us, it's just inside us. And um, what is the straightforward application of prediction such chaotic series is um, what is used to call mobile health programs, mobile health software. Um, surprisingly, even strikingly, uh, such poor thing as heart attack as brain injury can be avoided in 90, I love my stress, 90% if a person just lay still just in time. Uh, so importance of this application is obvious. The next application is smart city. We try to balance somehow the production of electricity and its consumption. It's a um, vivid example of chaotic time series. Oops. It stops work somehow. Trade system, all financial system, all stock market, all currency rates are uh, conventional examples of chaotic time systems. And so everybody who wants to develop um, trade, uh, any software for trade markets should apply to the respective theory. Uh, and a new topic, social marketing. In this field, uh, maybe the point of attention is advertising. And um, all persons who would like to advertise something in social media try to do uh, the following trick. They try to um, catch, uh, catch the following patterns, the following motifs. When some topic is relatively um, unpopular at the first phase. And after that, this very topic should become, uh, should undergo explosion. Uh, should undergo exponential growth. Uh, if uh, they succeed, it means that they buy um, advertisement associated with popular topic uh, for relatively uh, small sum of money. Spot the bot, another application of chaotic time series. Um, first of all, I would like to stress that uh, the bots um, could be understood, could be conceived, could be understood in uh, two ways. First, it can be a computer program that produces some texts. And uh, another way, it is a um, person who produce so-called pet comments. Uh, so um, they are used to code insincere, insincere users. So here we should distinguish three classes, three possible classes. It's uh, sincere persons that produce um, sincere comments, uh, unpaid comments, the persons who produces, so could produce uh, unsincere comment and computer programs. Uh, conventional application, um, weather forecasting, weather prediction. I believe that everybody uh, here, when had planned uh, his or her visit to Tbilisi, uh, try to check what would be the weather in Belize in these four days. And actually, uh, for me personally, the first prediction approximately months ago was it, it would be four days of uh, raining. For the, it uh, would have rained for these four days. Um, some comments 
some comments about the spot the bot, why I consider this um, an application of chaotic time series. Uh, it seems to me it is not so straightforward idea. Uh, uh, the concept is as follows. Um, if we are able to map each uh, word in a sentence, each word in a text into some vector uh, or in some scalar, the sequence of this, the text uh, may be uh, considered, may be construed as a sequence of these uh, vectors or scalars. Uh, mathematically, it is a time series, single dimensional or multi dimensional. Uh, it is quite possible to uh, check whether this series is uh, um, mm, chaotic or not. And uh, interestingly enough, it appeared to be chaotic time series. And moreover, Russian language appears appeared to be more chaotic than, say, English language. I don't know about Georgian one. Uh, actually, there are two possible ways to uh, construct such series. First one is uh, associated with uh, so-called sentimental analysis when each word is um, mapped into a scalar uh, and this very scalar um, presents information about its emotional characteristics, whether it is positive or negative. That is bad is minus one, good is plus one, and then sulfuric acid is uh, nearly zero. Another and Mm, it seems to be more interesting way to uh, interpret texts, any text as time series, as chaotic time series is associated with mm, common uh, procedures such as word to vect and similar ones. Uh, I'm not going to delve into details. I believe that most of us know that it is quite possible to map each vector into semantic space and respectively each text uh, becomes a sequence of such vectors and uh, these um, sequences appears to be a chaotic time series. If uh, they are considered mathematically, on the slide one may see um, such sequence for, uh, as far as I remember, the first thousand words of War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Uh, it's emotional piece for Charles to um, uh, to novels by Charles Dickens. Um, uh, actually, it is um, uh, original masterpieces, and their translation into Russian language. Why I consider this so important? Because um, maybe one of the most most interesting application of this theory to real world practice is a sort of mean to um, estimate somehow, to assess somehow the quality of translation. Um, everybody knows that we are able to translate it with Google Translator, but we, what we are unable to do, we are un that is we are unable to assess whether this translation, whether this interpretation is good or not. Uh, actually, for this very task, we need uh, a person who uh, is good enough in both languages, uh, which is rare thing, I should say. And um, it seems to me the first step to, automa to make some automatic software system to assess the quality of translation. Maybe not masterpieces, literature masterpieces, but ordinary, for ordinary text, it seems to be good enough. Uh, mathematical problem statement. Um, as far as it is far close to evening E2 and to Georgian wine, so elements so not to concentrate on some uh, mathematical problems, I only allow myself to stress that uh, it is a little bit different from um, conventional problem statement for time series prediction. In conventional time series, we usually have only a single time series, which is partly known and partly should be predicted. Here we may use, here we may utilize uh, a series of similar time series. And all these time series provides us with information uh, for prediction uh, at times the time series in question. It is very important, say, for chaotic time series uh, where it is possible to use all 
mm, currency rates that is possible, use all stock rates to predict uh, a single rate which is interested for now, a single rate at hand, a single service in question. Uh, surprisingly, there is no uh, unified definition of chaos. And what, uh, only what I can provide, uh, what only I can provide is some concepts which is called um, chaos fingerprints, chaos flags. It means that any chaotic system, any chaotic time series demonstrate some properties which is unusual for uh, regular chaotic times, for regular time series. And um, maybe the most important of such um, properties is so-called the prediction horizon. It means that we are able to predict chaotic time series up to a certain threshold. It doesn't mean that we don't know a good algorithm to predict, and maybe nobody knows uh, the good algorithm to predict. Uh, and some brilliant mathematician will provide us, say, 500 years later with such an algorithm. Not it's a feature of this time series. Nobody is able and nobody will be able to predict after the horizon of prediction. Uh, what does it mean? It doesn't mean that um, prediction, the average prediction error grows exponentially with the number of steps one wants to predict ahead. And uh, frankly, speaking, frankly speaking, the overwhelming majority of the papers in this field of science, um, uh, in this field of science, concerns concern with uh, the prediction to a single step ahead. If, it, if one uh, would want to predict some 10 steps ahead, one would want to predict 10 steps ahead, he runs into the exponential growth of error and to the predictions like, okay, one month after this point, the temperature in Belize will be zero plus minus 50 degrees of Celsius. It was entirely correct and entirely useless. Uh, okay, what we can do, what we can do to, uh, to make more reasonable, more correct prediction for chaotic time series. Uh, we may apply, we may employ such a thing as predictive clustering. What is it? The, maybe the basic idea, the basic idea is that we try to find in all long uh, time series, or maybe a large set of long time series, some sections which are similar enough. Usually we apply some clustering algorithm for, this, for that purpose. And uh, if we have, if we have mm, uh, succeeded in finding such sections, such, um, such chunks, uh, then if we uh, run into something similar, something similar in the routine, in the prediction procedure, we may mm, think like that, that mm, if first five observations are similar, maybe the next sixth, seventh, or ninth observation should be similar too, with, with certain degree of probability. Um, such, mm, such uh, sections um, are used to code motifs, and what we try to do, we try to do, try to find some motifs uh, in this time series. Uh, in this very part of presentation, I presented uh, some concepts, some concepts related to uh, predictive clustering to the prediction of chaotic time series to multi-step ahead, to many steps ahead. And um, the, blue, um, the blue sentences, the blue points are those uh, which are relatively conventional and uh, the red sentence, the red points, are um, those which are unconventional and proposed maybe by mine or my colleagues. 
illustri illustration what our motifs are. You see a time series, some similar block extracted from it, and prediction process. Uh, another interesting point is that it is possible to use not successive observation it is was used to be, but it is possible to employ non-successive observation when we try to catch some um, things like maxima, minima, and other important things. We try to concatenate our vectors to cluster. We try to concatenate our vectors to cluster in order to find our motifs, our uh, conventional sequences, typical sequences uh, from non-successive observations. Uh, firstly, it provides us this uh, thousand um, predictions, thousand uh, predicted values for a single point. It's a very good result for a um, field where to obtain a single result is rather hard, it's rather tough topic. Uh, illustration for this very point. I allow myself to skip a little bit. Uh, another concept, another concept of interest is so-called non-predictable, non-predictable points. It means that sometimes, especially when we try to predict for, multi, for many steps ahead, we are unable to find any motif to predict. Uh, we, I used to call these uh, points unpredictable, and for conventional uh, forecasting theory, it seems to be a drawback of algorithm. But for me, it seems to be a uh, very important feature, very important advantage of algorithm. It's very good when um, the program sincerely talks you that it is unable to predict, then it uh, predicts anyhow and provides us with completely irrelevant results. Uh, the general outline, the general outline what we um, try to do here is, I allow myself to compare it with attempt to run through a swamp, through a quagmire, from tussock to tussock. Uh, we are unable to predict what is uh, what happens between tussocks, what happens in the quagmire. But we are, uh, we are really able, we are able indeed to predict what is in these tussocks. And maybe the uh, main goal of the future investigation, maybe it was the future investigation to um, develop a correct definition of what is tussock R. We have for each such point, um, say, thousands of uh, predictions of different, of various predictions, of different predictions, and we try to extract some information from these predictions. Uh, it's illustration, and it's some results. Prediction of uh, benchmark time series, the long time series. Uh, green is uh, unpredictable points, blue is real time series. Uh, red, dashed red is our prediction. The lower, is a prediction for this electricity combustion for Australia communion. And uh, the last one is a prediction, a sort of motif for uh, Twitter, um, for uh, Twitter topic popularity. And just one more slide. Uh, information for uh, Literature chaotic time series. Mm. You see that all, mm, what is it? Uh, David Copperfield, Christmas Carol, Anna Karenina, and One Piece, they all have the positive chaotic, uh, the, the positive highest Laponov exponents, which means that this is a chaotic time series. Moreover, we can compare these values for different translations of these literature pieces, and we are able to Mm, draw a conclusion which translation uh, closer to the original masterpiece. Thank you for your attention.